Hi, welcome back to another episode of Fridays with Fran and today's job is a job that I really don't enjoy doing but we are trimming some of our ball goat's feet. Um, we do this about four times of the year and this one is to get them ready for the billy goat going in. So I've got a bucket of food here and that's used to lure them in without catching them. I'll put a little bit in at a time. A useful point up here, by coincidence, to hang it up. And then I haven't done Auburn yet, so we'll do her next. So goats are really awkward to turn over onto their bottoms. They're very slimy and slithery as opposed to a sheep who just sits down. There you go. Now she's on her bottom, she's sitting on a hip, which is far more comfortable for her. Um, so around directly on her spine, I turn her onto one hip, and as I do the other side, I turn her onto the other hip. And then we're just giving her a routine trim, so keeping them in shape. Now sheep, you rarely have to trim their feet. There's the odd one you do, but on the most part, they look after themselves. Um, but goats need routine trimming, so we do them four times a year. The bag gets less so when they've got a big rock in their field, which they climb on. It helps keep them worn down, but the bull goats and the Guernseys do need regular foot trimming and it doesn't hurt them it's no different to us having our toenails trimmed so particularly at this time of the year when it's very wet the goats are prone to getting wet between their toes wet inside little cracks in their hooves and that can cause infection which can make them lame so we're trying to keep on top of that and as I said we've got our billy goats going in um, at the end of the week and the last thing we want when we're trying to get our goats pregnant is for them to be lame that might mean they don't stand up and the billy goat can't mate them, which means they won't have kids. So both the nannies and the billies need to be in top condition at this time of the year. Most of the goats that we've got here, particularly the bull goats, have names. And a lot of them have been bottle fed like Auburn here. And um, very sadly, I can tell you our family tree going back. But she's a big character. I wish she had two enormous kids actually really hard to deliver and um, probably the hardest kidding or lambing that I've ever done along with our livestock manager in between us taking turns it took us over half an hour to get her ginormous kid first kid out and then the second one was just as big which was really challenging so this year we're really gonna have to watch how much food Auburn eats in the run up to kidding and hope she doesn't just have one kid she has two or three right you're done off you go Coming down the hill now, that's Josephine, um, named because she looks like our life sort of manager's cat in markings, as he had as a child. Um, and Josephine and Auburn here are actually different years, um, but they've got the same mum, as has this one, and this one, and this one. So it's all big, one big family around here. These two are different. Um, their mum was called Emily, and she was a brilliant goat, and we've kept lots of her daughters within the herd. She was my favourite goat, which is why they sort of stayed. And Emily threw kids that are slightly different colours. Normally a ball goat is sort of white on the body and brown head. Um, Emily was, she had quite a brown down to her shoulders, but she's brought in these lovely red ones. Um, and then Josephine with her really interesting markings. We've had a few others of their daughters now that are red and some with big patches on them. The next one I'm going to do is very different again. And this is little dipstick here, named because of a little brown tip to her tail. The dipstick has a trait that we really don't like in goats. Um, so she has something called fish teats. So if you look here on her udder, one teat is normal and that will milk fine. The other side, her teats are split. So she doesn't have uh, different compartments to her udder. She's got two halves, um, but this one has two teats coming off, which does make at the start, the kids uh, struggle to suck a little bit. Um, so that's a trait we're gonna try and select against. Um, so we may not keep daughters of her or we'll put her to a different billy this year, definitely. Um, and hopefully we'll try and breed that out. So we're just clipping off the very edges. She's not too bad at all. So this was quite uneven. She had a bulge there. So we've taken that off. Just take that little bit there. Hers are in quite a good shape actually. So she doesn't need to do an awful lot. Um, don't want really to cause any damage. Back foot is a little worse. Um, but still not too bad. So just take the edges off. Um, you can see in here, there's a bit of muck. And we've got a hollow, which is what we don't want. So that's where infection can build in there. 
um, in that crack. So I'll just cut that crack off the side. On the big dairy farms where they've got hundreds of goats, they have to obviously turn them all over four times a year to uh, trim their feet. And some have over a thousand goats. And that's a thousand goats every time, which is a bit of a killer on your back. So they have special machines which will help turn the goats over. So they go into like a little crush that holds them still. It then secures them tightly, a lever will spin, and the goat turns around on its side so they can just trim its feet without bending over and wrestling every goat, which makes life a lot easier. Right, dipstick, you're done. So the boar goats are all done, which is great, and the next stop is our Golden Guernseys to run our animal barn. And coincidentally, this week is the Rare Breed Survival Trust Golden Guernsey week. So they have a breed of the week, and it's Golden Guernseys this week. So I'll leave these guys alone and head that way. The Guernseys are much more wise to something going on than the boar goats, which although they're in a small pen, actually sometimes makes them harder to catch. Now the horns come in handy as handlebars, but they also really hurt your legs. So it's not too bad when you're doing it in wellies, but I've done it in the summer before without wellies on my legs. And the points of their horns always hook round and get the back of your calf. Which she's going to try to do to me now. And because they've been in the barn for a few weeks, their feet are a lot harder which sometimes makes them a little bit harder to trim. But So again, we're just peeling them back, cutting down to flat level, take that back bit off, do the other side to the other hoof. Now we're here, we just check in between, check that's all healthy, it's not raw or wet, damp, showing signs of infection, but it's just got normal hair in there. So you can see the difference between the one we've done and the one I've yet to do. So not much of a difference on this one, but just a little bit that it won't get too bad over the year. It's the same as us trimming our toenails, we don't wait to get, so they're big hooky things. Um, we just do it regularly. Um, it's not sort of a date set in the calendar, we just keep an eye on how they're looking. Um, definitely when, before they go out in the field, it's easiest when they're in the pen. They're with their lambs, they've just kidded. Um, we don't want to turn them over when they're heavily pregnant, so wait till they have their kids. And then part of the routine, they're there in a little pen nursing their day-old kids, or two, three-day-old kids, is we put a mark on the kids and the mum so we know who belongs to who. The little kids get their ear tags in and the mums get their feet trimmed. Um, that way we don't have to catch them in the field so often. Now, these have only been in the barn for a couple of weeks now, and so their feet are a little bit hard. We find the ones when we do them in the spring at kidding time, their feet are really hard then because they've been on the dry, um, and it makes their hooves go really hard and tricky to cut. Um, so occasionally we get the odd one, we have to turn it out and catch it again um, when its feet have softened up on the soft soil. Yeah, so she's sitting on her bottom, she's quite comfortable. But as you can see, just where her horns are hooked, they're resting on my welly, where they were. Um, so if you don't have thick trousers or boots on, that can start to hurt with the points of their horns. So as I say, the billy goats are going out on uh, the end of this week. I'm not sure what day yet. Um, but we're then meaning we'll have little kids at the start of March, which is one of my favourite times of year when we've got lots of baby lambs and particularly baby kids around. They have an awful lot more character, the kids. So I'll crack on and finish this job. As I say, they need to be done ready in time for the end of the week for the billy goat getting in. Um, so join us next time and we'll hopefully be either setting up with our Dorset lambs or if we're lucky, we may have the odd one or two to show you. And that, see you next time.